I'm about as real as they come. All my beats tailored by Joe. Maserati Rick in Detroit. Convertible bird in Miami. Graduated summa cum laude. Strip club made a tsunami. Carlton Hines with the ball game. Grateful Edmonds with the snowflakes. Craig Pettis in the M-Town. Sal Magluta with the boat game. Falcone with the cocaine. Like Freeway Ricky with the plug game. Like Monster Cody in South Central. Larry Davis from Close Range. I'm doing good. I'm doing good, man. I told you I was gonna hit you back. I just wanted you to let let everybody know who we, let everybody know who we talking to. Hey, so uh, what's going on, man? This is little thing I had about over in California, and um, the brother reached out to me, you know, showed me some love and thank you um, to a story. So uh, I finally reached out to him and made in contact with him. I found out where he was from and where he got the passion from. You know, and um, so I uh, respect and appreciation for you reaching out to me. You know, I just wanted to introduce myself to those of you who might not know me. I'm from Oakland, California, born and raised. I was arrested in 1988 for possession and manufacturing of crack cocaine. And I was a first-time offender. And because I wouldn't cooperate with the federal government, they gave me 35 years. I had just graduated out of high school and in 1986, so I ended up doing 27 years, 10 months, and thanks to President Obama, he granted me a clemency, which is a computation of my sentence, and um, I was released on October the 13th of 2016. A 20-year-old man accused of being Oakland's crack cocaine kingpin appeared in court today. He was arrested last week in what police call the biggest crack bust in city history. Darrell Reed is his name. He was ordered held without bail. Prosecutors say that they expect more charges to be leveled against him. And police say gang warfare may break out in Oakland to fill the power vacuum because of Reed's arrest. Reed will be back right, in our court other top on story, President Obama commuted the sentences of more than 100 prisoners today, including an East Bay man arrested nearly 30 years ago. Daryl Lamar Reed was found guilty of distributing crack and cocaine in 1990. Now he's just months away from freedom. ABC 7 News reporter Cornell Bernard talked with Reed's family tonight. He's live in San Leandro. Cornell. Dan and Amma Reed's family is grateful to the president for the pardon, but not everybody is happy that he's coming home. He's coming home, they say, in December. I say, woo, like that. It's the news Dolores Steffens has waited 26 years for. Her son, 48-year-old Daryl Lamar Reed, is being released from prison. I told myself, too, I believe the Lord sent him there for a reason. Reed was only 20 when he was busted by the feds as a kingpin in Oakland's crack cocaine drug trade. It earned him the street nickname, Little D. As part of the Reagan era's war on drugs, Reed got a stiff sentence of 35 years in federal prison. I just want to thank President Obama, man. It's, it's, it's been a long journey. Reed's son, Lamar, thanks President Obama for commuting his father's sentence. I knew I had a father who loved me, and I knew that, you know, that I had someone who wanted me to be better than he was, and he was gonna, he was gonna push me, and he's gonna, he was gonna push me to be that. Lamar went to college and is now a mixed martial arts professional fighter. Nicole Lee with Oakland's Urban Peace Movement lobbied Washington to free Reed. She says Reed's been a mentor to hundreds of youth by calling into meetings over the years. I think he feels like it's his responsibility to turn the tide the other way um, and really use his life experience as a way to help steer young people in Oakland in a more positive direction. But former Alameda County Deputy DA Ross Giantini believes Reed should stay stay behind bars. He was a major player and a, a gangster. I mean, that's the only way you can characterize him. Daryl Lamar Reed is scheduled to be released from prison December 28th. In San Leandro, Cornell Bernard, ABC 7 News. Yo, yo, we back.
It's your boy Pop a lot. Mob ties. We on our way to the west side with it. Oakland. All my niggas from Oakland, y'all niggas get in the comment box. Y'all already know how we rocking. Real trail spill shit. Now, today, we are going to be covering none other than the West Side legend himself, Daryl Little D. Reed. Now, before we talk about Little D, we really can't talk about him or tell his story without kind of painting a picture of Oakland. Now, if you guys have never had the fortune of visiting Oakland, uh, all I want to tell you niggas is be careful. <laughs> now, Oakland is the largest city in the county seat of Alameda County, California. It's a major West Coast port city. Oakland is the largest city in the East Bay region of San Francisco Bay Area. It's the third largest city overall in the San Francisco Bay Area. It's the eighth most populated city in California. And it is the 45th most populated city in the United States. So what that kind of tells you is just Oakland is going to be a bustling hub. It's going to be a lot of stuff going on. Um, transportation very busy. Um, and you know wherever it's people, ports, transportation hubs, and hustlers, it's going to be people getting money. And according to, or by all accounts, because I don't even have to say according to anybody, because it's just well reported and widely reported that Oakland pretty much was home of one of the all-time biggest dealers in the game and there's going to be a gentleman by the name of Felix the Cat Mitchell who it's it was reported that little D is his nephew through marriage so I want to say we want to lay that out there now to Oakland now Felix Mitchell is like a urban folk hero uh, a lot of people will call him an innovative entrepreneur a financial wizard and definitely the main thing was a provider of jobs. Now, they gonna. it depends on who you ask. Some people will probably say that Felix Mitchell destroyed the city. But some people you're going to ask, they're going to say that he empowered people, gave people jobs. Um, a, a FBI agent that arrested Felix Mitchell by the name of Mr. Steiner said Felix could have went on and been a CEO. Um, he had a knack for business, but he said, unfortunately, that business was heroin. Now, Felix Mitchell's gang was a gang by the name of the 69th Avenue Mob or the Mob, and they it was on it was known that they dominated the East Bay heroin trade for nearly a decade, and his operation had a sophistication that law enforcement agents had never seen and has brought as much as $5 million annually. And this is back in the 80s. So we want to keep that into perspective. Now, in 1983, after a lengthy federal investigation, Mitchell was convicted on numerous drugs and tax evasion charges and sentenced to life in prison. Now, while in prison, Mitchell was stabbed to death in 1986 in a Kansas federal penitentiary. Alleged, some, and this is alleged, they said it was over a $10 drug debt. Now, his body was brought back to Oakland for a lavish funeral, one like probably never seen before. Um, thousands of people turned out to watch. It was a bronze casket that was brought down the streets of Oakland in a horse-drawn carriage, if you've ever seen it. And one youngster speaking to a reporter said that watched the presentation likened uh, Felix Mitchell to Martin Luther King. Let that set in. Now, uh, according to authorities, um, he was Felix Mitchell was dead. And, and by all accounts, he was dead. But his legacy endured and the reigns of his gang was they gonna say was turned over to a guy by the name of Daryl Lil D. Reed 
and that's going to be the gentleman that we covering. And they would say that even after that, it would go on to a guy by the name of Tim, Timothy Blewett. And after that was after Reed's arrest, because Reed would be er arrested just a little bit after Felix Mitchell was killed. But Reed and Timothy Blewett would actually be drug runners for Felix Mitchell as teenagers. And that's just how the game was. Uh, you can go from somebody that was pitching rocks, I guess, on a corner or just jumping off the porch because he was 20 years old. If you guys heard him, he graduated in 1986. He was arrested in 1988. So he came home when he was 48. They gave So they gave him a 35 year sentence. He ended up serving 28 years of that sentence. And um, at the time of his arrest, the, the agent in charge of his arrest would go on to say he had the whole city. Um, and the agent now is retired. It's gonna be an agent by the name of Scott. And he retired from the Oakland, the Oakland Police Department in 1997. He was going to say he had people in East Oakland, had people in West Oakland, he had people in North Oakland, and pretty much they're going to say he was not as flashy as his predecessors, talking about Felix Mitchell or um, even Mikey Moore, um, but he they say he lived a lavish lifestyle that was funded by cocaine sales, and in December of 1988, a little bit before his arrest, they say he paid $30,000. And this was in 1988. So um, I would say it's, that's the equivalent of maybe 50 today, maybe 55. Any mathematicians or any, y'all y'all kind of figure that out. But they're going to say he paid 30000 for 3000 guests to attend his birthday party at the Golden Gate Fields Turf Club. Um, so it was pretty much days after that where authorities would bust him and in a raid of his Adams Point apartment in Oakland. And they would say they seized up to 30 pounds of crack cocaine and 16 pounds of co of powdered cocaine. So, and it had an estimated street value at that time of $3 million, which was a record seizure at the time, according to court records. Now, um, if that don't tell you the level that he was on, you just... You just wouldn't understand. They, they, the Los Angeles Times would go on to report, and this is pretty much verbatim. In three years, Reed rose from street dealer to millionaire, according to Oakland narcotics officer Ken Scott, who headed the investigation. Agents suspected that Reed may have taken over some of the territory previously controlled by a drug lord by the name of Rudy Henderson. So that's going to be how he ended up being brought down because he was related to Felix Mitchell, but Felix Mitchell was arrested when he was still in high school, 1986. So he, I'm sure he probably had ties or, you know, family ties, but he wasn't off the porch when Felix Mitchell was, was in jail. So he didn't, he was running for Felix Mitchell, but um, according to the LA Times, he didn't directly put a little D in the game. And <clears throat> they're going to say he previously, he took over a uh, territory that was ran by a guy by the name of Rudy Henderson. And he was awaiting trial. And this was back in 1988. On December 11th of 1988 is when the Los Angeles Times actually reported this. And they say Reed was intercepted in telephone wiretaps in Henderson's case buying multi-kilogram quantities of cocaine from Henderson. So pretty much that was all it took at that time. It was obviously a full press on drugs. And this is going to be right around the time where it was transitioning from heroin to crack and crack cocaine. So all my West Coast people, I know y'all was asking for this, so I had to Throw it back up there. It's your boy Popola. Y'all make sure y'all follow me on Instagram, on Twitter, P O P underscore A underscore L O T. Y'all let me know who we need to cover. Y'all make sure y'all hit the bell. Y'all subscribe if y'all want to know when this trill, real spill shit is dropping. And we're going to be back with more, man. It's the mob. 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 
mob ties 